Today we have a special treat for you. We are here at the Bear Bulb Coffee Shop in Kathleen, Georgia, where we have managed to catch up with Karen Spears Zacharias. She is the author of a new book called A Silence of Mockingbirds. And it is catch up. You it are is. a hard person to catch up it with. Is. It's true. It's a crazy tour right now. You All live in Washington. Live in Oregon. Oregon. Teach in Washington. I mean, way out there. Way out west. And here you are. You, this is your home state, though. Georgia's home. Georgia's the home state. Georgia's home. But how long have you been on the road with this? Uh, well, the tour actually started in Oregon because the book takes that place makes in sense. Oregon, right? So it started there. But so the first of April and what is this? Second of May or yeah. something? Yeah. yeah. That's great. And then you're going to while you're here in Georgia. Not, you know, this will air later, but. Today you're doing book signing at Gottwald's Books. Right. You've been here at the Bear Book Coffee Shop. Right. You're gonna do a writing class here tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Yeah. 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 And then you're gonna be up in, in Woodstock. I know at the end of the week. I am. So. I'm doing Auburn's uh, news this week and um, Columbus home. All right. Let's talk about the book, and then we're All gonna right. go back to the other stuff. But this book is do you classified as true crime. It is true crime. That's so, the genre of true yeah. crime? Right. Like, I had someone ask me the other day, so you wrote a true crime book? Is it true? <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's why we call it true crime. That's, that's so, you're so right on it. Uh, <laughs> that was so funny. But, but you know, I've, I've, I've known friends who have written true mm -hmm. crime books. Jackie, Jack one Weld, and White right, is, right. is She's great wonderful. at doing wonderful. it. Wonderful. But this is the first time I have known somebody who wrote a true crime who was part, not of the crime, but of the story. Right, right. And let, give me some background and, and tell so about that. So it's, it's kind of a hybrid thing because as a writer, you had to make a choice. Yeah, initially, I read it straight from a journalistic standpoint. I was a journalist. As an outsider. Right, as an outsider. I was a journalist. I'd worked cops and courts. I had done all of those things for many years. But as a reporter, you never think that someone you know is going to be in the headlines. Yeah. I mean, you it's like being the fireman who shows up at the scene of a crime or a car wreck and finds out that it's his son who was driving the car. So in this case, it was a, a murder of a three-year-old girl, and it just so happened that I knew the girl's mother. She had that she had lived the mother had lived in your home. Had lived in our home, had been like a second daughter to me, had been part of our family in every way that you could be part of our family. To me that makes the job of writing easier and harder. It was definitely harder for me. I mean, but you did you, you had lived it, so you had, had first hand information of the character. Right. But having known the character then my gosh, it must have just been horrendous that her child was the child that was murdered. 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 I mean, right. I guess you don't put it any other way. She was murdered. She was murdered. Physical abuse of the child. Right. You know, and, 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 and that's, you know, we talk a lot in this nation about sex abuse. And, and that's been in all the headlines. But the one thing we don't talk about when it comes to children is actual physical abuse. I'm not talking about sex abuse. I'm talking about... Uh, not to say that sex abuse isn't physical abuse, it is, right. but I'm talking about the beating, the slapping, the uh, torture of and, a child. And in the book, Karen, you know, because I've read it, I loved it, uh, I thought, you read it and you, you state up front what happened, the right. act that happened, or the result that happened, the child died, but you read the book thinking, no, 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 don't right. let it happen. Right. Yeah. So my goal as a writer, initially, I wrote it as true crime, mm -hmm. uh, as you would uh, as a reporter, telling the story with just the facts. Sent it off to my agent in New York. She called me and she said, it's terrific, but you have to go back and tell us about your relationships with these people. And so she was right from the standpoint, if you are the journalist and you don't tell your readers, I know these people, Mm -hmm. then you're writing fiction. You're not being honest with your readers. You have to tell the reader, I knew Sarah, I knew Carly, I knew David. Well, did, did, your, did your publisher at any time say, 
no, I don't want you to be part of it, or yes, I do want you to be part of it. No, they, no. You, you just start out being part of it, and they said, that's a good way to do it. Well, you know, it took me through 28 publishers to find a publisher who would, who would publish it. Because it's a difficult book to read. I, that has nothing to do with your talent. It has to do with the topic. But there. it's the topic. It is the topic. Yeah. But here's the thing. It's difficult because this is the one thing that we still refuse to talk about in the U.S. So, and if we don't bring it and talk about it, then things are not getting right. better. And it isn't getting better. In fact, uh, some of the things I didn't know, even as a journalist, that shocked me in, in the research of the story is that the U.S. has the highest rate of child fatalities from child abuse of any industrialized nation in the world. The highest rate. Boy, and what a great statistic for us to carry. I know. And we have no national child abuse policy at all. So, re, you know, reporting from state to state varies. In the 10 years we've been at war in Iraq and Afghanistan, we've lost 6,300 soldiers approximately, a little bit over. In that same 10-year period here on U.S. soil, we have lost 20,000 children. 20,000 children. Same soil. All of those right that here. are reported. Mm -hmm. Those are the reported ones. After we, the fact, there's some that these I'm are sure die of, of abuse that is covered up. Right. That they, is. They all, uh, you know, sometimes they will uh, count it as SIDS when mm -hmm. it was suffocation, or they're, you know. People lie. If, if you get nothing out of this, you should get that mothers will lie and will be complicit in the death of their own children. Well, what amazed me, though, was that these are people who any of us could be friends with. Exactly. College and, and educated. College educated. Everybody in Carly's life was college educated. Well, everything about Sarah makes her sound like a person that you would just be she intrigued was. by. I mean, I love Sarah. She was like a daughter to me. So she is beautiful. She's engaging. She's charming. She's very soft spoken and she's manipulative and she's reckless and she's a liar. And she put her own life ahead of her child's. She put everything ahead of her child's life. Everything. And I wish I could tell you that that's unusual, mm -hmm. but it's not. As I've traveled the nation speaking at child ab abuse assessment centers and before people and learning these stats, in Georgia alone in 2010, we lost 77 children to child abuse. That is, that's if, absurd. if, if, if you're talking, and obscene. Right. If you're talking mm -hmm. classrooms, I mean, just classrooms, that's three classrooms in an elementary school. 77 kids. But you know, you're you're a very outspoken person. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, to put it mildly. I don't think so. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. Shy. But we met, I think it was at the South Carolina mm -hmm. Book Festival, I'm not yeah. sure, but it was when you wrote the book Hero Mama. Right. Which was your own story about, and about your mother's story. Right. Because your father was killed in Vietnam, and Correct. this was the, her raising right. two children, three, two, three, three, three children, children, you know, with after his death. And I loved Hero Mama. I just, you know, I loved that book. But you became an outspoken advocate of veterans then. Right, and, uh, Gold, coming, and Gold Star Family. Yeah. So that book, and that, that, that occupies a lot of your time. It did. And, it, and it still does. Still does. But that book is now in paperback and it's with a called, different title. Yeah, with a different title called After the Flag Has Been Folded. I think you're going to be in Ripley's because you're the only person I know who had a <laughs> book named one name. When it went to paperback, it got another name. Well, here's the deal on that. So when it was being published in 2004, 2005, I wanted it called After the Flag because I knew every military family would know what that meant. Mm -hmm. But it was New York and they were making the decisions in a New York in 2005. Or they didn't know what after the flag meant because that generation of New York um, decision makers in the publishing field had never been around during the Vietnam War, had never known what that was like to see casket after casket coming back. So they didn't choose that title. They chose the other one. And then when that one uh, didn't resonate with the community because it was the wrong title, it was the wrong package. Then when it came out in paperback, they said, we're changing it. And uh, they I said- I always think I this year on Mama. I'm yeah, sorry, I really I know, do. Because I, know. I did like that title. I like the title because it actually came from Vietnam. I went to my dad's battlefield in 2003. 
So that title came from the fact that the Vietnamese built a statue to honor the women who had lost husbands and sons in the what they call the American War in Vietnam. And they call her Hero Mother. And I just southernized and yeah. called it Mama. Hero Mama. Yeah. Right. Well, let's talk about your background, though, because you had written another book prior to Hero I did. Mama, I did. Uh, which was a biography of a judge. Yes, it's uh, Georgia's first elected woman judge, and her name is Judge Ruth McCombs, and the book is called Benched. And Mercer University. Mercer. Yeah, My Mercer publisher. published it. Mark Jolly there. And uh, Judge McCombs is still living. She's in her 90s now. And uh, that was my apprenticeship as a writer. You did that, then you did Hero Mama. Then, after that, was that when you got into Louis Grizzard? Yeah, I always think that your titles on your books are those. Right. Will the Jesus Lewis, buy me a I double love one? I Louis, of course. Louis's uh, agent, Tony, uh, had helped me, Tony Privet had helped me get my first book published. She had helped me on Ruth's book. But let's talk about the titles of those, inter those books between Hero between. Mama and this. Yeah, so that was, uh, those were political social commentary books, and I did them with a Christian publisher, Zondervan. And uh, so, Where's Your Jesus Now? Where's Your Jesus Now? Actually came from a crime story I did as a reporter in Oregon. And, you were, and that's in the book? Mm -hmm, it's in the book. The grandmother was taken hostage, and they were holding a gun to her chest, and there was a picture of Jesus above the bed, and they said, Where's Your Jesus Now? And she said, He's right here. And I said, I want faith like that. Yeah. I want faith that when the gun's on my chest, I can still say Jesus is right here. All right, then this, the next one. Well, Jesus, find me in devil light, which is why I'm here today, right? Uh, is actually this group has read Will Jesus find me in devil light and reported, I mean, uh, studied it. And that book is um, uh, is kind of a joke about my own growing up years in Columbus, Georgia. When Dad died, Mom couldn't afford anything but a 12 by 60 single wide for us. And you had to move up. That's yes. a goal, a dream. Yes. So Let's go to a double wide. Right. So when you're a kid growing up in West Georgia in a single wide trailer that's really crowded, you think rich people live in du double wides. I did. So it was, it's political social commentary, but it's actually a collection of interviews I did with people about you their. You interviewed a lot of people did, for that book. All across the country, but including Sister Schubert. I know. Yeah. So. Um, you have to read the book to find out right. about that interview. So those are, uh, you know, I asked them two questions. Tell me about your relationship with God and tell me about your relationship with money and how those two mix. So I guess that's three questions. Right. And then that brings us to A Silence of Mockingbirds. Now explain the title. It's The Memoir of a Murder. Right. So A Silence of Mockingbird, the title comes from a study out of the University of Florida where they actually were studying mockingbird nesting habits. What they learned is that mockingbirds are mostly monogamous and that both the mother and the father will protect the nest. That that's a, a, a chore that is equally shared. And the nests are built low to the ground so they're um, susceptible to predators. But those mockingbirds, what they had those students at University of Florida do was go over and touch the nest during nesting season. And so as they went over and touched those nests, the mockingbird recognized that student. And from then on, whenever that student was on campus, it didn't matter if there were thousands of kids in the quad or whatever that student was wearing, that mockingbird knew that student was able to identify the predator among thousands. And I'm like, if a bird with a bird brain can figure that out, why can't humans? And if the adults or parents, parent, in this case, had had the intelligence of a bird. Well, they, they, they had, let's, let's not dismiss this. You know, the people involved in this case were all college educated, all intelligent. But the problem is, we think child abuse is a poor man's problem, and it is not. You are such a delight. You really are. And I am so proud of you. I've been knowing you a while. Yeah. You're Thank you, Jack. I good person. It. And we do want to thank, you know, the Bear Bowl yep. Coffee Shop for letting us come here. And great do, food here. Great food. Yeah. Great people. Yeah. But thank you so much. I sure. wish you so much success thank on this you, tour. And, and we'll keep our paths keep crossing. All right. Thanks, so thanks Debbie. a lot. Thank you.